21 years ago, I started consulting in the city. Uh, uh, did I feel like a fish out of water? Well, yes and no. By default, I guess I was a fish out of water because there weren't many people who looked like me doing what I do, let, let alone people who look like me um, doing what I do and talking about the topics that I was talking about. So from that perspective, I guess by default, I was a fish out of water. I was the only person that looked like me in the room. Um, however, did it actually affect me negatively? Not really. You know, I got lots of clients, still have. And um, in most cases, uh, people welcome the difference. As long as I was good at what I was doing, uh, from their perspective, I represented uh, a, a, diff a different voice, a fresh perspective uh, uh, that enabled them to literally and figuratively color things up. So it actually worked to my favor, I would say. Now, did I have any problems? Was I a victim of bias, for example? Uh, well, yes, of course, uh, but not that much. I think it's really important when we talk about things like bias to be really open about the nature of bias. And what I realized is that on certain occasions, I would misinterpret, for example, unfavorable decisions towards me or delays in agreeing a project. Sometimes I would uh, misinterpret that as a form of bias towards me. Um, and I would call that directional bias because it's, uh, that it was directed towards me. At least that's what I imagined. Um, but in many cases, I realized that I was wrong because later on I would get the project and I think, oh my gosh, I've got that one wrong. Um, so what I realized is that there are two forms of bias. There's directional bias, which is towards you because of your difference, your age, your sex, your ethnicity, your disability. But there's also reverse bias towards the majority where you assume when you are on the receiving end of a negative decision or, so, or a far, rather an unfavorable decision, um, that uh, the other person is coming from a place of bias. Well, actually that's your bias. So now you become the perpetrator and they become the victim. Even if they're uh, uh, um, in a, a higher authority, that doesn't make them impervious to the palpable uh, reverse bias coming from you. So I think it's very important that we're open about these things. Now, the, the other side of this is that, how do we deal with this? Because how do you know whether you're actually imagining bias or whether you're actually on the receiving end of bias. And I think it's important for all of us, whether we're part of the majority or the minority, to call out sensed bias. We can't wait for safe spaces and going to have conversations with other people about what we sense has happened when we don't actually know if it's happened. What we need to do is to be able to call it out in the moment so that we can move on and recondition the other person, but also allow for our misinterpretation. So this got me thinking. And over the years, I started to think, well, how could I possibly do that? And I realized that the way to do that is to simply say these three powerful words. I don't understand. Whenever you sense um, that you are on the receiving end of bias, whether you're part of the majority or a minority, simply say, I don't understand. And when you say some variation of I don't understand, what's going to happen is that there's more good news. You're going to invoke what we would describe as a teacher in the other person. You're going to invoke the natural human instinct to give direction. So in other words, when you say I don't understand, a person will show you immediately or they'll say, what don't you understand? And in both cases, that gets you into a conversation that you wouldn't have otherwise got into. So I think if we're confronted with any, if we're confronted with any form of bias or we sense that we're confronted with a bias, directional or reverse, simply say some variation of, I don't understand. And what you'll find is that you'll invoke the teacher in the other person and they will show you where they're coming from. Also, by saying that you don't understand, you, um, ha you invoke an open conversation, but also you allow for your misinterpretation and by allowing for your misinterpretation, you don't get the other person's back up. You don't get them annoyed and you don't get annoyed. You're able to collaboratively navigate uh, sense bias and come to a conclusion at the end of it. And what you'll come to the conclusion of is one of four things. Either the bias will call itself out, uh, in which case you can look to address that, or you'll, you'll realize that you were coming from a place of reverse bias or something that neither of you had thought about uh, uh, is probably the issue, or there is something that you weren't privy to as, as a minority or marginalized group, which was totally fair, which is why um, the unfavorable decision um, came your way. Either way, you're in a position to progress your relationship, agree next steps and move on. Very simple.
So that's my lesson in relation to being out a fish out of water. If you're confronted by bias um, and that makes you feel like a fish out of water, check yourself and make sure um, that it's not your imagination. And the way to do that is to simply say, I don't understand.